What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of On the Red Couch with Max Power. I am Max Power. Couch still red. It is still red, even though it has been a long time. Uh, we decided to try again. <laughs> it's a reboot of a show of a show of a reboot. Um, yeah, we've been gone for a little while. You've been busy. I have. You want to tell the, the, the kids about the other podcast you've been doing? Uh, we can talk about that later. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll throw that in there at the end. But, uh, yeah, I started another project uh, with a, a friend. Uh, he doesn't really like being social. But I started with this with Paisley. But I started another podcast, and we've been doing that a little bit. And I've been traveling. and We've been traveling? We've been traveling. Uh, I went to Scotland. I went to Missouri. Have I been anywhere else? Austin. Austin, Dallas, Dallas. Um, shit like that. So we just kind of taken a break over the well, over the past couple of months. So <laughs> this show is kind of a reboot, a little and bit. Speaking of reboot, we watched the, the Crow. Crow Part Two: City of Angels from 1996. Yes. Um, before we get into it, we were supposed to watch Expendables. We have watched Expendables. I, uh, 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 but I fell asleep. I watched Expendables. A little bit. Um, you missed and it's been a while. Yeah. So, it's been so long since we actually got to record that. So we decided to, we were going to record, and I don't want to watch it again right away. Even though it's been months, I just don't want to watch it again. So so we tried pulling something from our picture. Yes. There's franchises in this picture. We pull out one at the end of every episode. And if we've already seen part one of this franchise, we go on to part two. Until the franchise is done, and then we pull it out. And throw it away. So we pulled Godfather. <laughs> we didn't want to sit through three hours yeah. tonight. In the At that point, week. it was six, right? It was after six. Yeah, so then, and we hadn't eaten. The movie it wouldn't be done till nine. It's a two, just shy of three hours long, so I was like, I, I can't do it. That's like a, and, yeah. that's an early afternoon during the day kind of binge watch real quick. Um, so then we pulled from the picture again and we got Crow and we the Crow, the Crow. Uh, we've so. already reviewed the Crow, the first one with Brandon Lee. If you go back into the episodes, yeah. the archives, uh, the archives, it is in there. Um, it's on sound spot, it's on SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. and YouTube. So if you want to see your fucking pretty faces, uh, you can watch it on there. So yeah, so we decided, uh, I've seen both these Crow movies, Chris is not. No, I have not. So, at the end of the credits, what did you think? I Overall. felt... Oh, man. This don't, is, don't give me a number yet. We'll get that. This is going to be an awful take, but I Ooh. felt like an idiot. I knew this movie existed. How, so, in this movie, you, they start playing songs from the soundtrack. Uh -huh. And they're bands I know. Uh -huh. It's like fucking Deftones. It's Korn. It's Rob Zombie. And then the was on there too. Yeah. And there was one song I was waiting for that never played. Which one? <laughs> Iris from Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, that would be a good one. You know why? Because they were on the soundtrack of Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, which was actually City of Angels. The movie was actually uh... called City of Angels. So I'm thinking, wow, this is a weird movie for the Goo Goo Dolls to have a song on the soundtrack, let alone be like the song that made them fucking popular as shit. And I'm waiting for oh, it the entire movie, even... and it never came. It never came. Okay. <laughs> the girls just never showed up. No. Um, the Goo Goo Dolls. Great band. Is it safe to say that this felt like a carbon copy of the first movie? To a degree, I would give it that. Yeah, it's a it's definitely a remake reboot thing. It's the same concept. Um, if you guys were gonna spoil this movie, so if you've it's never only twenty five years old. Yeah, you, it's from ninety six. So if you haven't seen it, you should probably just stop listening to us because we're just gonna go I, in somewhat detail in the movie. Yeah, but I don't. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this this movie to anybody, to be honest. 
Would you rather recommend the first one? Yes. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So in this case, the sequel, reboot, remake, whatever you want to call it, it did not work out for me. Really? Yeah. Did you feel that then or do you feel that now? Well, the first time I saw it was probably like early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the hype had been already, I'm sure at one point somebody was rebooting, remaking it again with somebody else. And then uh, that, that, that style of music that's in those, in the grunginess of all those movies got me. And that was when I was learning about music and stuff like that. So then I got into grunge and it kind of fit perfectly. So mm -hmm. without knowing the full history of the crow, the original movie and randomly, you know, I knew about it, but like, it's not, a, I didn't realize at that time, I probably didn't think it was like a, what a cult movie was. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was like a, a nice, a good movie. So then to see this, it's just like, as a kid, I was like, uh, oh, yeah, it's fine. It wasn't anything horrible, but watching it again, that's, this is the first time I've seen it in 20 years. No, 15 years. Yeah. At least, at least like maybe, maybe 15, 10 years. And okay. Yeah. It just didn't hold up. Didn't sh really? There's some cool scenes, but I think the, the virtually the same line, um, the, the the same story, just kind of, and it's a different guy, but it looks just like. Uh, Brandon. You made that comment several times in the beginning, yeah. and ever since you made those comments, I couldn't get it out of my head. Yeah, that there were certain angles where this looked like Brandon, I, to the point where I even said halfway through the movie, I was like, I wonder if they just used sh unused footage in the first one to use in this one, mm -hmm. because there's some scenes where you're like, it didn't really fit in that what's going on in the scene and yet he's there and he looks just like Brandon Lee and it's like, but it's not. But then like the next scene, it looks completely, he looks different mm -hmm. and his hair was different. If you looked at the movie throughout the movie, he had different style, almost a different style of hair halfway through the movie. <laughs> and it's like, at one point his hair just becomes like feathered and right, whatever. So plot a lot. The, what the, do you the, know about feathered hair? Well, I don't have any hair anymore, so I don't know. Um, but so the plot is uh, the character Ash. He his son witnesses a murder of a, a gang murdering somebody. So then, to keep them quiet, they murder Ash and his son. The glitch is the movie doesn't start that way. The movie starts with the girl having dreams. Oh yeah, yeah. of something that happened. Well, she so, she dreams that she sees them dying, but yeah. she, she thinks it's just a dream that felt real uh -huh. until um, the crows call her. Yeah, and ah. and they and they wind ah. up leading her to the body, and that's when we start getting flashbacks of that scene of the of them both dying throughout the movie until the very end where he gets his vengeance. I guess. Yeah, it's it's definitely like throughout the movie you you see. More of the their what happens to him. So like yeah. it doesn't show you like oh this is what happens. It shows you from different angles. So pretty much there's like a gang of five of them, and Ash the Crow comes back to life because he has unfinished business. He has to avenge him and his son's death. So he comes back and he kills the five people leading up to mm -hmm. the, Judah. Judah the 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 master the 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 leader of the group who's a drug lord. Mm -hmm. it's the exact same kind of plot line as the first one. Yeah. He comes back to life to kill three or four people in different ways, depending on what their characteristics are. And somehow the main boss knows how to get rid of the guy that no one even knew existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the first kill, um, I forgot his name already, but uh, he was inside the warehouse. Oh, long hair, goatee. Yeah. He looked, they were in the he warehouse. Had the, with he the, had the Abe Lincoln beard. He had the, yeah. the brown, but he had blonde hair. And they were in the cocaine factory or the drug factory. Yeah. And he got blowed up. Yeah. Which, what did he, he, and all the, the final things that Ash remembers is what, how he, how he dies mm -hmm. in the movie or the, the last thing phrase. he says to him. So he says his. Whatever, whatever they said to him, he yeah. says to them before the um, So yeah, he blows up the entire factory of dr like the drug factory, killing him. And then this this is a part that gets me that I was like, really took me out of it. So after he kills him, all the debris and stuff makes the shape of a crow, 
right, on the ground, mm-hmm. like a big crow, you know, 20 yeah. feet wide. And then Iggy Pop, you know. Rolls up on the bike. In it. This yeah. is 96, and he looks. Like he does now? <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's 100. Yeah. He's, and I think he's, I looked it up, I think he's like 75 now. So I don't know what that guy does. <sighs> I'm sure it's, obviously it's cocaine and stuff, but whatever his regiment, appetite is yeah. and regiment is, fucking props to him. Anyway. He shows up on his motorcycle and he's like, he sees the the crow thing on the ground, and then he opens up his shirt and he has a shitty crow tattoo. It looked more like a raven. If you thank you, shitty tattoos. Yeah, this girl is an apprentice for a reason. Yeah, and so he has this tattoo on his chest. So then he goes to the drug lord Judas and he's like, "We got a problem." There's all the drugs are gone. They blew up and homeboy's dead. And then he's like, you have a sign. And then he opens up his shirt and he has it. And it's like, he had that shitty tattoo to begin with. Mm-hmm. But like, he didn't get this, like, it didn't just like suck onto his chest or anything like that. I was very confused. I, that, that part just. Is I, there I like know. a piece, a scene on the cutting room floor in the beginning of the movie where she's giving him this shitty yeah, protest? Yeah. Is it like, possible that we maybe missed that or that it exists? I mean, it never happened it? in the movie, but I'm sure it could have happened in like a. I'm sure they wanted it because, it, yeah. but it didn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, her tattooing was awful, god awful. <laughs> There's a scene at the opening where she's drawing a spiral on the back of this bald dude's head, and she doesn't know how to color in the lines. She doesn't know how to stay in the lines, out of the lines. She doesn't know how to shade. She doesn't know how to fill. Nada. Whatever. So, who? What happened next? Um, Iggy Pop is not the next person that dies. No. It is the Punisher, the Punisher. Thomas Jane. Thomas Jane, yes. He go. Oh, this was my favorite one. Yeah, my he team. goes to the peep. He goes to a peep show because he needs to get one off, as and you. he gets some. As he gets some tokens, as you and do. beautiful blonde shows up, and she starts teasing and stripping a little bit, and Thomas Jane's character is rubbing one out, and she's trying to get him to rub it out before the time runs out. The time runs out, so the little door closes. So he's all frustrated and puts a couple more tokens in the machine. And when the curtain, the steel curtain comes back up, it's the crow. That crow. <laughs> it's Sting. <laughs> and the crow flies through the glass and takes Tommy cool. Jane out. It yeah. was a pretty cool scene. I see him like Superman fly through it. Yeah. And so he gets he gets killed. <laughs> he pokes his eyes out. Yeah. Pokes his eyes out, strangles him. Yeah, he's on top of him and he and uh his character is the cameraman who films everything. He films everybody getting killed, everybody doing everything. So they t- he takes out his eyes. So, so yeah. he can't, it fits, it fit perfectly. And then he put him back into the, the peep show room. And I thought that was a cool visual just to see yeah. him like dead, you get blood. And he had, he had a weird like uh, wig on. I don't know. Yeah. It was weird. All right. Next. Next was, uh, Power Ranger. The Yellow Ranger. The Yellow Ranger. Yeah. What's her name? Thu- it's T-H-U-Y. That was her first Tui name. Tui Trin. Tui Trin. Is that Tui Trin, I think. Yeah. Uh, she was looking amazing. Uh, like a dominatrix. Yeah. And then she comes into the house. They kidnap the girl, the ta- the shitty tattoo artist. And because uh, they're going to, they realize that they have to kill the crow to lose, to, for the actual crow, the bird. Yeah. To lose to his, his powers. Power. Or get, and then gain his powers, I guess somehow. I don't know how that shit works, but so, so a fight ensued with the uh, yeah. with the crow and Power Ranger and the Power yeah. Ranger, and in the end, the Power Ranger um, was told the bedtime story that she told the kid yeah. before she shot the kid. Uh, Hush, little baby, don't you cry, don't you cry. Bonnie's gonna teach you how to die or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. So. She's, so the crow had her. Had, she fell and she broke her leg, so she couldn't stand up. So the yeah. crow picked her up and sang her a, re, a version of that lullaby, and throwing her out of the window. And she landed not on top of the car, but her head smashed like the car door Basically. and busted her head open. Stop. And so the that that scene ends with her laying on the floor, blood everywhere, but the blood is a crow. Huh, in the shape of the crow. Ha! Oh, was he? How was uh, Thomas Jane's character with the crow? I don't remember. He must have had it somehow on the peep show. Was it the lights? In the peep I think show? so, yeah. Because he had like gold, like the, the boom lights. So I have to, we'd have to go back. I'm not going back and watch that. 
Iggy. What Iggy. happened with Iggy? Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop, uh, of course, he's a sex, drug, and rock and roll, so he was at a sex dungeon with oh. a whole bunch of people in leather spanking and kissing, and, and he's walking around. and Cheers to that. Yeah, and he stands, and he's just standing looking at the crowd at the edge of the bar, and he looks in between the, the mass of people, and there is the crow standing there, and the crow, almost like in his voice, it was like almost like Iggy's voice. Mm. He says whatever Iggy said. I can't remember what it was. And uh, and then he pulls out a gun and he shoots and he misses. And then a whole bunch of people behind the bar just start unloading on the crow. And he just takes it. He stands there and he's just boom, 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 boom. Iggy takes off on a motorcycle. Goes after him. The crow takes off on a motorcycle. They get into a tunnel. And what did I say when the tunnel popped up? What did it, it look like? like the tunnel from the Dark Knight Rises? Yeah. The one that they're like they're trapped yeah. and they, they have to blow it up or pull the rocks out so they, they can get out of the football field or whatever. Yeah, no, this it's is the one where they're going into. Yeah. And it's like uh, Joseph Gordon Lovett and all those characters or the mm-hmm. not not Joseph Gordon. Is it? Yeah. It, Joseph I know he's in there, but I don't know if he's in that part. He's in that scene. And yeah. it's pretty much like this is the only way in, only way out of anyway. So it looked really familiar. And Iggy Pop says, I'm not afraid of you, and then he charges at him. The crow shoots the shot. I guess it's a shotgun. It was a right? shotgun. He shot it at the at gas the tank, tank, and the tank blew, blew it up. Blew up. Iggy went flying. He has a piece of the tank in his stomach, and then he, um, the crow, puts the coin in his mouth. Yeah, and pulls him out into the pulls, into pulls the, him out into the dirty, out, dirty yeah, ass water. Yeah, and then a whole bunch of people throw flowers onto the water, and it makes the shape of the crow. Yeah, <laughs> I see a pattern. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Main event time. The crow against Judas. So, Judah. Judah. Yeah. Judah. Judah. Judas kiss. So the, the girl, Sarah, the shitty tattoo artist, is catch is she's a prisoner. And the crow comes. I don't know why he comes to save her. The crow can't do anything. The bird. Crow the, yeah, bird, the bird tries sorry, to come in to save dick. her. And <laughs> And the timing is the perfect that they drop yeah. the little cage from the ceiling, <laughs> clack yeah, right on the giant bird room, and the bird lands in the, the one spot perfectly. Uh, and then uh, Judah fucking stabs it in the hands, and as he's doing it, the, the crow, symbolism was cool. Yeah, the crow is climbing th- from a, through a concert. Yeah. Is climbing up, the, scaling the wall so that he can the go in. Person a, crow. The it's actual person, Ash. crow. I guess we just Ash. Ash. Yeah, we'll call him Ash. Catch him. And um, he's crawling up the wall so that he can try to save the girl. And Judah is putting, uh, is stabbing the the actual bird on one one wing at a time. And then if, and then the the Ash feels it in his hands, and he's like stigmata. Yeah. And so when uh, Judah stabs the crow in the in the heart, he he just falls. And so the cur- the legend is, if you take away the powers from Ash. He only has the pop, the strength of a normal human. So taking the crow away, away from him doesn't kill him. He just makes him human, like, like everyone else. Even though he was dead, and now he's well, brought back you, to life. Wouldn't you just like if you were if you were come back to avenge, and you'd be like, oh, I'll just kill my crow, and then life is good. <laughs> I guess it don't work like that. No, but yeah, he doesn't give up. He has flashbacks of his son through the Day of the Dead concert or whatever. And so he finds his way into no Judah was out came outside and, yeah. and fought him and tried hanging him. Yeah, outside on the light pole. Pretty cool scene. Yeah, and then he had a whip too, and he, so yeah. And everybody's he, chanting yeah, he's while whipping, whipping. he's whipping the shit out of uh, Ash while he's being choked. Uh, we didn't even talk about the the psychic. Yeah. Throughout the entire movie, there's a psychic that's predicting the whole thing, which was the same in the first one too. He had a psychic yeah. with him. Yeah, uh, and she had her eyes cut out. She had her eyes cut out. Paisley, it's okay. So she so. had visions of the future, and she wanted to stop them. So she pulled her eyes out, and it actually made the visions more consistent. Yeah. So she knows exactly what's going on the entire time of the movie, yeah. and she's helping Judah. But then, seeing Judah kill the crow, the bird, he realized she realized that she was in the wrong. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she frees Sarah. Sarah runs down this tall ass building real quick with and then she runs to stab uh Judah. Judah, who now has the crow power. Because he drank the crow blood. Yeah. After he stabbed the crow. 
The bird. Yeah. God, that's so sad. Uh, yeah. Crow milk. Fat milk. From, yeah. Uh, it's always sunny. And so uh, Ash tries fighting Judah. He pushes. He, imp- he impales Judah. And Judah didn't feel oh, anything. No. Sarah gets stabbed first. Oh, Sarah, Sarah gets Sarah stabbed tries first. To, Sarah stabs him in the eye. Yeah. And it, or maybe the forehead. We can't really tell. It's because it's always at an angle. Yeah. It's like this. He pulls it out. No and effect. Then he stabs her. She falls down. He get Ash gets a second win. He pushes him into this pole, and it goes right through Judah. And he's kind of standing there. And then he realizes, oh, it doesn't hurt. And he, he kind of looks at him, and he kind of does that little jiggle. He's like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm not bad. And then Crow says, um, or Ash says, uh, what does he say? My power is pain is my power. Pain. Yeah, he's like your power. I have your power. I'm the I'm the crow now, and he's like my power is my pain. And then he summons all the crows. All these crows that are in the roof, and they fly through him into Judah. And then Judah's and gone. Like, duh, 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 and he's just like Rah! And then he's gone. And then he just disappears. And that's the end of that. That's the movie. And then he drops. I mean, he takes Sarah back to the, or he takes Sarah to the. Um, he takes her to the the, the monuments mm-hmm. in the church, the, and then you never she's find, dead. You never find out if she dies or if she somehow survives. Yeah, you never get to hear. Yeah, and, and then he just he, he just, just rides off. Yeah, and that's it. Um, decent cover song of the original. I would rather prefer the original. Um, there were a couple of cinematography scenes that were pretty badass for the time in this yeah. movie. Um, when he walked through the fire, yeah, that looked pretty. That good. looked pretty that good. Was, that was probably the best yeah. part, or the best, like, yeah. Uh, some like some of the like those '90s movies back in the day, they always liked that blurry, fast motion. Like, focus on this real quick. Now look right. over here. Now do this, and then come down here, and then look at this person go by, and it's like you're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it kind of gives you like a little <laughs> bit of a I feel like you're gonna have a stroke or something. Yeah. Um, but there were some cool scenes, but. Yeah, I would just if you if you give me an option, I'm, I'm watching the original. Yeah, which oddly enough, we were watching it on the Paramount app, and after the first the second one finished, the first it one, suggested, yeah. "Hey, watch the first one," and it's then like, bloop, bloop, it automatically played the it's first just a, one. Like, it's okay. a cycle, and they're yeah. like, "You should watch the second one." Go back to the, you just continue to watch the crow <laughs> for the rest of your life. You just get sucked into it. Or there's uh, a glitch, and then like City of Angels with Tom Hanks, and then, like, <laughs> but it's Tom Hanks <laughs> with the crow outfit. It's Meg with the brush. Straight oh, lines, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, there's one part in this movie that makes that made no sense whatsoever. There, well, it can't, it's two scenes. It's a 90s movie. There were several scenes in there that I was like, yeah. Okay, well, there's, there's two scenes where I was like, this makes no sense. Oh. So uh, we're watching Paisley almost hit the, um, the, cam- the, the camera, camera stand. And that's, then... Yeah, she's done it already while we've been recording. She comes back again to try it again. Um. The girl, there's a girl, a young girl in the movie. If you scoot over there a little bit, she'll sit. She'll just go over here and sit here. Come here. So in there we go. In the first one, there was a little girl, and she was kind of the crow's um, grace. Wait, the little girl Grace, little homeless girl. Yeah, but it was what? almost like a tribute to the first movie because the first movie surrounded the little girl. Was that Sarah? Was that the Sarah? Was that the same Sarah? Not no. the same act, actress, but the same she, character. No, her name sure? was Grace. She he. Someone asked her what her name was early in the movie. I don't think it was Crow. I think it was some someone. No, else. I'm saying Sarah in this movie. It was the little girl in the first movie. No. Grown up. No. No. But she said her friends moved away to a better place. I'm gonna have to look into that one, dude. If that is, whoa. I, it was a reboot. It was a reboot remake. Because mm-hmm. it's still the crow. It's still the same concept, but we're gonna, I'm going to have to look into that one. <laughs> but, okay, so there's a little girl in this in the second movie that is just there in one scene, and Sarah, the girl, talks to her, and then the next time you see her, she's like in this, like, almost like in a, like a sewer, and it has, like, water, and she has the drugs, and then Ash, the crow, jumps down Burns the drugs, and then like pretty much tells her it's gonna be okay. And it's like he, a birthday cake. Blow out the candle. Yeah, and then he just leaves, and that's the only time you see this girl. And it's like, why do we need these two scenes? Like, mm. it made no sense. 
I don't get. I it. figured that it was kind of like a tribute to the first movie where it's surrounded around the little girl that she had lost her friend. Her fr the opening scene is the girl loses her uh, her friend yeah. gets attacked or something. He's, she's taken away in the, yeah. in the in the hospital and she, into the in the ambulance, and she's wondering wh what happened to her friend. And I figured that's which we saw just a yeah. minute ago because we we started yeah. watching. That's the like, only reason why that moment's so fresh in my head. Off. I need to I need to look it up and see if that's the same girl because that would be kind of cool if it's a. Uh, all right. Yeah. What do you give it out of 10? Six? I'd give it like... I a gave three. the original Crow a 10, I think, because... Everybody is, it, is it, up it, there. It, it, for it being a um, cult classic, it the first one holds up well. Yeah. The second one feels like it's trying too hard to be mm -hmm. the first one over again. I instead of that. doing yeah. something different. Yeah. Or continuing the story and yeah. changing it up a little bit. Yeah, I could yeah. see that. Uh, I mean, I'd give it like a f five and a half. Is that it for the Crow uh, franchise? Or is there any more? Uh, I think that's it. I think there might be one more. Like a, another like, oh, well, maybe not. I don't know. We might have to retire it. We have to pull that's out of the yeah, picture. That's it. I mean, it's in there again. I don't know where it's at. We shook it up. So in that case... Well, while we're at it, if you guys aren't familiar with it and you haven't watched anything else from us or listened to us, what the hell are you doing with your life? Besides living your best life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apart from not listening to us every six months, talk about a movie. I picked the Godfather Crow. and The Crow. Crow. And you picked Expendables. And Expendables. Not your okay, experience. so there's a bunch of movies and movie franchises in here. We pick one, watch it, review it, pull, pull another one. It's uh, either a movie that I've never seen before. Or and I he have, has, or, I've or never he's seen. never seen before, and I have. Uh, so in here is uh, Harry Potter, Fast and the Furious, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters, Jurassic Back, Park, Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, Friday the Thirteenth is still in there. Oh yeah, Superman's there's, still there's, in there's there. Like Ten thousand of them. Yeah. So these are all. Some of these are all being reviewed. So I'm gonna pick it. So the next one we got to review. If it's the fucking Godfather. No, no, it's this one, whatever this We'll is. have to come on a weekend and, and record that early. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Uh, we've watched two of these already. Fast and Furious? Nope. Ah. Uh, Friday the 13th? Nope. Ah. Uh, Conan? Nope. It's not Superman. We only saw one. Uh-huh. I've never. I'll, I'll give you another clue. I've never seen this. Oh, shit. I've never, this is the franchise for me. I've never seen this franchise. I give it away. What we, is it? We are going to be reviewing Mission Impossible Three. Three. Oh snap! Yeah, I've never seen it. Wow. Or at least in, I haven't seen it in the entirety, or you know that kind of thing. So put that back in there. Oh man, Mission Impossible Three. Yeah. Now we're getting out there. Okay. I so, can't remember the last. I know I've seen it because I've seen the the first three. Once they went the when Tom Cruise twenty five years later, and then they did four, five, and six. I saw like five, I think, or six. I haven't seen the the new. But the you've new seen set, the third. But one. I've seen the third one. It's been I've, I've, it's probably been since it was at the theater. Oh man! Just like you hadn't seen this movie that we just saw in like twenty years or fifteen yeah. years. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so it'll it'll be just about new for the both of us, even though I've I've. Kind of, I can remember it if I. Once you it watch it, you'll start yeah. start drawing some memories of like, oh yeah, this is this thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I was literally just talking to my neighbor about um, Tom Cruise and doing all his own stunts and stuff because we watched. He uh, still does his own because shit. Uh, right now uh, Top Gun Two is coming out. Wait, isn't there already a Top Gun Two before this new Top Gun? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Because I was gonna say we could throw it in the picture. Yeah. Well, we could watch. The original, and then review, and then and review the new one. I don't, I if I've seen the original, I haven't seen it in 20 I've never 20 seen years. it. I've never okay. seen it. Well, we gotta write that down, put it in there. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess either, it, well, if that, if there's not a second one, if there is a second one, it was like a straight to DVD kind of bullshit. It's, Does it's, that count in this game or no? Yeah, why not? Okay. But I mean, we'll we're, let it we're about to watch, you know, 25 Jason movies, so. There's a shit ton. There's reboots. There's remakes. There's fucking all that shit. Freddy versus Jason. Jason yeah, all X. those things. Yeah. So Yuck. I mean, we got to add in some shitty movies too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not. I I can't remember if, if I've seen uh, Top Gun. 
I so, know I have it. And then the new one is, I think that it's coming out or is it already out? If, you know what? If we're going to go on a bit of a tangent real quick, COVID screwed up a lot of the timeline in our lives. Yeah, that's true. I feel like I've seen this Top Gun trailer for two years. Yeah. I feel like this should already be on TV. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, I'm about to watch it on TBS. Yeah. At like 3 this was supposed to come out. This was literally supposed to come out summer 2020. We're two years later, and the movie's about to come out in like a week or less than that. It's coming out soon. Yeah. I think yeah. It's, it's this month. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's odd. That's very awkward. I think that's killed a lot of buzz. Well, because it's also it's, the fact that it's fucking Tom Cruise, and he's a people like his movies, but he, he's a weird, he's a weird guy. The yeah. trailer doesn't really give much to what the story is actually about. Right? Oh, there's a there's an extended trailer, and it's long, and it it's everything. It yeah. gives everything away. Yeah. Like they, oh yeah, yeah yeah. They pretty much give you the whole movie. <laughs> Miles Teller's in it. <laughs> um, he was the he was Mister Fantastic in. Fantastic Four movie. Oh, hey, yeah, he okay. Was, uh, the drummer in um, Whiplash. Yeah, you ever seen that movie? No. Oh, as a music <laughs> guy, you would love it. Oh, you would think so. I just never had. I think it was like on streaming services or something. No, that, that, was, that was a movie. That was, was a movie. Was years movie? ago, yeah, this is like 2018, 2019. Oh, yeah, oh, that's a show pass movie. You should watch okay. Whiplash. This thing's called Whiplash. Uh, I like Miles Teller. I think he's a good. I think he's a good act, actor. Um. But I don't know why we're talking about that. J.K. Simmons, right? Isn't that movie Whiplash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, so, I think I know what it's so about. J.K. Simmons is Washington. his, like, he's the, the best, like, drummer in, col- like, in, like, all of colleges. Like, he's the best. And so Miles Teller wants to learn how to be the best. And so he gets a scholarship. But, like, it's like he plays so long that his hands bleed. And then, like. J.K. Simmons is like, do it again, do it again, and he's like, I can't do it, and stuff like that. And then he like falls out, and then they fight, and but it's just like him drumming so long, and it's just like you see his hands blister and stuff, yeah. it, and bleed, and it's like, is that, Dave Grohl in this? Probably, I don't remember. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Mission Impossible Three. Interesting. We have access to it. I'm sure. Yeah. You own it. Uh, I'm sure. It's on, I'm sure it's on uh, Paramount or yeah. something. Um, or if you, Peacock. Yeah, go I'm back and review those episodes. Uh, the first two that are already on here on uh, the YouTube's or SoundCloud or Spotify. Um, yeah, uh, check out Dookie Talk. Uh, yes, Patrick's not here, uh, but I started my side project called Dookie Talk. Um, it is a podcast about shit. So, kind of the premise is we talk about something involving like shit literally like if you've shit your pants at a state fair or in an elevator or if and, there is a show that will get negative downloads no no it's fuck it's doing it's doing great it's doing fantastic um and then cuz we just go off of it um did i tell you about this you're on one of the episodes. Yes, okay. you did tell me <laughs> one night of drinking that so, I'm on an episode yeah. because we were watching some movie probably in preparation for this podcast and i fell asleep and you guys broke out the tablet and hit record yeah. and started an episode with my yeah. So uh, yeah, so the show Percussion. starts. Show starts with a, a poop theme story, and then it just progresses. The episodes are like 25, 30 minutes long. They're not long at all. Uh, the intro is fantastic. Oh God, I forgot. Yeah, you, you oh, got yeah. that new intro song. The intro is fantastic. Um, <laughs> we're on Spotify that. and SoundCloud. So if you guys want to check it out, it's called Dookie Talk. Um, Chris, do you have anything you would like to promote? Oh my god! Um, my buddy Travis and uh, resur- decided he wanted to resurrect Pop Culture Rewind for a, for a spell a or two. It's been a while since um, we've done that. Yesterday, he and I recorded an episode breaking down Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. This could be this yesterday was yeah. Um, and it turned out to be just as long as the movie itself, but it's it's a bunch of fuckery in there but no spoilers, it's, no spoilers, no yeah, spoilers. i won't say anything still except, have, still the, that. except no, no, our no, no, the no, no, episode no, no. of the movie is fucking good um and then i'll be at a wrestling show tomorrow and then the day after i will be recording another episode oh, of there's wrestling tomorrow. houston wrestling radio episode 400 who's, who's with, gonna be on there with you so far it's just me and abel you want to come over thursday yeah 
I'll have to see. <laughs> oh, we could make plans for the 10 year anniversary. It's happening in October. Oh, damn. I'll be on that. Yeah. I'll get Travis on there too. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. You should splice in some old uh, interviews with oh, Shane man. Taylor and Keith Lee, the incredible and shrinking Rowe. Adam Cole. And, uh, and the time I asked a pro wrestler for their gamer tag, and they're like, Are you fucking stupid. <laughs> you remember that one? Was I there for that? Yeah, ACH. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was probably the last question I asked. I just, yeah, I Shit, started. mostly everybody y'all have interviewed. We've yeah. interviewed more than once, but most of the interviews was that day that you were there with us for Ring of Honor. Oh, we, spread, we spread a lot of that around. Yeah. I'm mad I never got any pictures with you guys, but yeah. it wasn't my place to be in pictures. We're going off on a tangent. Yeah. And I'm still working on my poetry book. One of these days is going to be finished. My blog is J cv 8481wordpresscom Um, I'm post. I've been posting stuff the last couple of days, but it's. I've had a my new job's been taking a toll on me. It's weird ass hours, and I'm tired. So I'm surprised I'm pulling off this week so far. It's only Tuesday. We'll see if I can make it to Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Well, Wednesday night's gonna take you, take it out of you for sure. Yeah. You got eight hours of wrestling. Yeah. Packed in a three hour show. <laughs> Plus an hour show afterward. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Oh, God, the dark matches. Taking, oh, fuck me, dude. I'll have to take some Red Bull in the car. Yeah. yeah. And the drink tonight, he copped out. He didn't want any. Yeah. Um, from Great Heights, damn good beer, Blue Tilapia. Fuck you. I knew you were going <laughs> to say it. I knew it. Blue Tile IPA. I knew you were going to say it. But idiots like me call it Blue Tilapia. Uh, some, he, he told me the story. And now I'm like, I can't drop it. Yeah. So I'm calling it Blue Tilapia from here on out. If I ever go to the to the, to the brewery, that's what I'm asking yeah, for. You're not allowed. That's Blue it. tilapia. You're banned, you're banned from Blue the tilapia. Here's my token. Give me my tilapia. <laughs> Damn it. Give me that blue tilapia. Uh, I'm drinking a bottle, uh, a 1905 bottle aged uh, <laughs> Ozarko water. Uh, it is 1905. We were at the Ozarks in Missouri two weeks ago, and this fool still bought bottled water. I, I scooped it up. This is this is fresh Ozark water. We could round out the show with our trip to Missouri. Why did we go to Missouri? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's a little bonus. Yeah, okay, for bonus. This so if you, you guys don't want to hear our trip to, you can turn it off. But <laughs> 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 if anybody's listening, hello. Go uh, ahead and sign off yeah. like you normally do, which we don't have a sign off. So the show yeah. officially ends now. So the end show ends now. Ow. Goodbye. <laughs> but if you guys want to stick around, we went to Missouri. Spring, Why Springfield, Missouri? <laughs> because we went and saw a heavy metal band, heavy metal band, heavy heavy metal band called yes. Oakley Dokley. Uh, <laughs> this is the third time we've seen them, uh, and it will be the last time we see them because uh, they've officially retired after two wonderful albums, multiple tours all around the world. Um, they decided, I think one of them is having a kid and wants to just be a dad and stuff. So. And a lot of notoriety from actually being able to appear on The Simpsons. Yeah, they were on uh, one of the later seasons, uh, the intro. Um, so The outro, out where they, where they, when they play the credits, they play the credits over the video of White Wine Spritzer. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, that's what it was. So uh... that's the, that's how they, yeah. So, <laughs> so they play songs based off of Simpsons episodes. Which... I mean, as you see, his they're, shirt, they're he's wearing a Simpsons shirt today. I was they're actually going to wear a Simpsons shirt today, too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> One of our first episodes was Simpsons theme. Yeah, and then yeah. we've done Which the Halloween. Which is in the archives. Yeah. On and then we've I keep ranked... pointing at the computer. I don't know why. <laughs> and we've also ranked uh, Halloween episodes of The Simpsons, uh, Treehouse of Horror skits. So Simpsons is in our DNA almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what better place to watch Oakley Doakley, a Springfield cover band, than in Springfield, Missouri? Especially if it's the last well, time. Well, they're not a cover play. band. They're not but, a cover band, but yeah. um, yes. So they played in Dallas and they played in Austin. Actually, Austin was their last show. Yeah. But driving to those places isn't isn't entertaining um, to us. To us, so we decided it's Springfield. It's the last tour. Let's go see. We need. I was fiending for a road trip. Yeah. I fly a lot. Not lately with COVID, with the stuff with stuff going on right now, but I've been flying a lot, and I was fiending for a good road trip. So when this opportunity came along, we were like, "Yeah, let's let's just let's get tickets. If we don't make it, the worst that we bite is twenty dollars a ticket." Yeah. And we went. We took the drive to Springfield. Um, we stopped at Little Rock, picked up some beer at Lost Forty. Yep. Um, went to a sh weird 
smelly record store. Oh, yeah, in St. Louis. We drove Crazy. to St. Louis for a day. No, this was a uh, Little Rock. Oh, yeah, Crazy Little Rock. Mike's. Oh, my Smelly God. I, I tried to forget about Crazy, Crazy Mike's. Mike's. Smelly Mike's? Somebody picked Crazy Mike's out of, like, the Maps app instead of going to, like, recordstore.com to see if there were a license. I don't know these things. I don't buy records. Store. So I'm going over there, and I thought we were stepping into fucking Swisher House Records. <laughs> yeah, he just he just didn't watch. He us, sat dude. there and just like, watched us. About fifteen percent of his stock was unwrapped on the floor, out of their sleeves and out of their covers. Yeah, it was it was ratty. It was rough, and I hated man. to say that, but even like the couple of gems that I found, it was just the album. There was no cover. There was no vinyl. Uh, there was no slip pouch or anything. So we had better luck in St. Louis. We went to vintage. We ended up at Vintage Vinyl. Which is a St. badass Lewis. store. If you ever get a chance to yeah. go to St. Louis, that is a badass store. If you go next to next door to Blueberry Hill, uh, they pour across the street at Blueberry Hill. No, it's next door. The oh, restaurant was across the street. Yeah, yeah you're right. It was across the street. Uh, they pour shots about this big. A shot is normally this. They pour about <laughs> this. Biggest shots I've had shot in a long hand. time. <laughs> it was literally like two shot, like two shots worth. Um, Found a couple of records at vinyl, yeah, at well, vintage vinyl. I picked up uh, Mike Shinoda's first and only self titled, which has been out of print and it's like a hundred bucks on eBay. And then How I also pay for it. Retail's 30 bucks. Oh, and it was two bad. LPs. And then I picked up uh, uh, Every Time I Die. Uh, the, it, low Teens. Low Teens from Every Time I Die. Uh, that's also been out of print. That's their. St- that's not their recent album, but it's the album before. And um, those albums are getting a lot harder to find since the band officially broke up. Keith Buckley left the band. So every time I die, the the guitarist it is a uh, butcher. Is the butcher from AW Pro Wrestling. He actually wrestles. Um, Who's looking jacked. He looks a lot better now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in great in shape. shape. Yeah, because the they, band thing. They were, they, I guess he was getting in shape for a good a tour. For a tour, yeah. Yeah. Um, and because I think it was him that broke his thumb. So the tour got delayed. And then during the delay, that's when a lot of stuff started falling apart in the band. And Buckley wound up leaving. Oh. So, um, so yeah, the, the ETID albums are starting to get a lot more scarce. And uh, I picked up one uh, at the store, too. And then at the show, I picked up a copy of the first album from Oakley Dokley. You bought both of them because they the had right the thing. vinyls. Um, right, in, right in this collection right here somewhere. Oh, I'm not going to make an effort to dig through it. Oh, it's it right, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We met the band after the show. They weren't so hard to find. And um, autographed the first album for him. Autographed the first album for me also. Second one, yeah, Oddly Toodly, right over yonder. I didn't get that one signed, but I did get the set list, if you look at it. Set list signed by all the band members. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a Metallica that's set Metallica. list from s Yeah. This is we were promised jetpacks. That was it. That's all we had. Oh, there it is. The set list right there. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was an awesome that, that was the crescendo of the trip. The last day of our trip to Missouri was it culminated with the Oakley Dokley show. Yeah. Um, this asshole over here stopped me from crowd surfing. He didn't want to hold my album because I was gonna be doing the drive back. <laughs> You and were, because I have a bad back and stasis recti and a hernia, we were, which I don't give a f- We were, like, in the top of the old people there. Like, there was a lot of kids there. And this guy... Young! Goes, strong! They could have carried this. Me. This guy goes, lift me up. And I'm like, you're in your 40s, man. I can't lift you up. I wasn't asking you to lift me. I was asking you to hold my vinyl no, because they no. Oakley Dokley has an old school TV set. And so they they're, the stage extended out somehow and so that when the with the blue t- the TV in the center, it looked like stairs. And kids were climbing up the stairs to the top of the TV, right. and then they were jumping into like it was like a dozen different people in Flanders cosplay. Yeah. So there were there were Flanders swimming. <laughs> and I wanted to jump in the Flanders pool. This was a no. Yeah, because I know better. Uh, you, yeah, you kind of saved do. you. I saved well, you. Well, I've had mm-hmm. a good run. I got insurance. Y'all could have made the drive back without me. <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Next time, that. next there, show I go to. I was like, there won't be a next time because not they, for Oakley Dokley, but the up. next show I'm gonna try to get my one crowd surfing. Oh yeah, <laughs> remember the last time I tried to do that? We went to it was last year. We went and saw 
uh, Hardwired to Kill Em All. It's a Metallica cover band here in Houston. It's probably one of the better cover bands we have. And they were playing uh, Master of Puppets Live. And at some point, there's a huge mosh pit that opens up, a circle pit. And I tell Scott and his date at the time and my date at the time, it's like, hey, I'm going in there. I'll be back. And like 20 seconds in, I get knocked on my ass. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> and I switch. About this. I just went bam right on the floor. And I'm like slithering like a snake away from the pit so that I could turn myself around so that I could stand up. And I limp back around. And then before they. They could turn around to see me. I stand up straight like nothing no, fucking I happened. It. I saw it. I saw the girls movie. didn't. Yeah. But uh... yeah. <laughs> it was fun to relive my youth until that split second when I realized my mortality. Had until you realize me. that now, like, yeah, people I... in pits don't, like, now they're, now it's like aggression and they throw their hands. Like, pits back and in they the don't... day weren't like that, man. Pits, well, here's the thing pits back in the day, I think, were just as rough, if not rougher, but the people were a lot more considerate. Yeah. They, in a second, someone even looked like they were going to fall down. They would grab you. If you were on the floor, everything would – like someone would press the pause button, and everyone yeah. would pick you up just to push you around again, and they'd pray, press play again. And, yep. everything would, and then now, back into a cycle. You, you get knocked down. I saw some people get knocked down to Oakley Doakley, and they didn't get back up. For yeah. A while. They're getting – Yeah. It, it is what it is, I guess. I don't know. Two years worth of pent-up frustration in the first show they finally get to go to. Is the ugly dougly show that gets knocked on their ass and gets trampled on by a bunch I mean, of Ned Flanders? People have been to shows these days. You know, it's not like yeah. we've been to numerous shows since the pandemic. So even during pandemic, during pandemic, yeah, we yeah. were going to all the cover band shows and stuff. Uh, yeah. So it's not really a. There, I mean, there. I'm sure there are some people that have never have been. A lot, there's a lot of kids there, so I'm sure they had never been to a show. So to see, it's weird. There were a lot of kids, and there was the one old man with the with the, oh, the walker. walker. Yeah, he the had a walker. walker. He had a walker. <laughs> and I think the Flanders clan crowd surfed him too. I think they did. No, I don't know. Yeah. No, nah, I don't think so. I think the highlight for me was telling Scott and uh, Sam after the show. is like, you know, we had breakfast at Denny's yesterday. And it lasted longer than the set. Yeah, that's true. I that got, we drove got, 20 I, hours for. Yeah. And it was there, still here, fucking here, worth here it. And back, here it and was back. still yeah, fucking yeah, worth yeah. it, man. That was an awesome uh, trip. Yeah, I mean. We, it reminded me how much I miss a group road trip. Yeah. Because I I've, I've tend to be the, the one-man road crew whenever I go to a wrestling show or I go to a concert out of town, either with scheduling conflicts or just stuff that I like that no one else likes. So to have that feeling of a, of a packed car and and being yeah. in that confined yeah, space, right. getting to know getting to know Sam uh, and uh rekindling because that's how you we we had known each other for a good three or four years, but the road trip that we took to New Orleans for Elimination Chamber with Portia, our yeah. old friend falling asleep in the back, we went as like acquaintances and we came back almost as like brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You know? Yeah, if it wasn't for that trip. And then the next the next thing was uh uh the next time we went there was a couple months. Uh, we went to Mania. Mm -hmm. They yeah. had that Mania the next year. The next year, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then that was like... And that, I think that's the other like huge chunk of, man, you know what? I want another road trip. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean... I, <laughs> someplace I, different? Someplace the same? Yeah. I, I, if, you, if you guys are looking for a place to go, I highly recommend Springfield, Missouri. That place was cool as shit. I wish we had, we had more time to explore. We were all... All of us, when we were there, were like, we wish we could be here for like another couple of days just to yeah. go to more bars or go to restaurants or whatever. Check out the deep local fried scene. ravioli. Yeah, deep fried ravioli. Mm. Uh, we, we went to Emos <laughs> with an I. Um, the raviolis were good. The pizza from out there is different. The brewery across the street in St. Louis that we went to with your your buddy's wife. No, that was a uh, that was uh, Springfield. Springfield, yeah. What was the name of that place? Tying Timber. Tying Timber. There was some really good stuff there. Yeah, that, she works. We didn't have we didn't have a bad beer there. Yeah, and then we also went to Four Hands in St. Louis. Yeah, uh, we went heavy, to heavy rift. Heavy rift. Heavy rift in St. Louis. Uh, was heavy good. rift was killer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there was somewhere else that we went to after after St. Louis Arch. We went to this like uh, bar down the street that also had yeah. a bunch of beer on tap that we hadn't really had before. Yeah. It was yeah, but we, we weren't there cool. that long. Yeah, we just went there to try deep fried ravioli. Mm -hmm. That's all. It, I mean, that's all it is. <laughs> my, yeah. my foodie. 
Yeah. All right. Any other that thing? That was fun, man. You got anything else you need to talk about? Need to? Nah. Want to? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> At Me? least not tonight. Nah. You? you? Nah. nah. All right. So is that a show? Still don't have an intro, outro. Well, we don't have an outro. We have an intro. Yeah. Mission Impossible 3. We will try to record more often again. We're, we have a lot of we have shit. A lot in of here. shit to get through. Uh, we might have special guests throughout the season because we just to record shit. And yeah. Then, so there will be uh, new shit coming out, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Dookie Talk. I might have to bring Dookie Talk on. The, I, oh, he doesn't want to be on. Camera, oh, and so. we uh, we talked about the idea of the B sides because I now have an, a couch, also a full size couch, and it's blue. blue. So the B Lucide. B Lucide. So yeah, check out. I mean, hopefully we can do one of those pretty soon. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, I know. I got it. I know what we can do. Uh oh. We're not. I'm not gonna spoil it. This is. We're not gonna tell it on here. But I got it. Okay. I got it. All right. So. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Toodaloo.